Good morning, folks. Let's listen together from this reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I'm in chapter 12. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability to everyone for their particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. The Spirit gives one person a message full of wisdom, while to another person the same Spirit gives a message full of knowledge. One and the same Spirit gives faith to one person, while to another person he gives the power to heal. The Spirit gives one person the power to work miracles, to another the gift of speaking God's message, and to yet another the ability to tell the difference between gifts that come from the Spirit and those that do not. To one person he gives the ability to speak in strange tongues, and to another he gives the ability to explain what is said. But it is one and the same Spirit who does all this. As he wishes, he gives a different gift to each person. Christ is like a single body which has many parts. It is still one body, even though made up of different parts. If you were to set out on a mission, and you could travel the whole world, and you were looking for two people that were as different one from another as it's possible to be, then you would do well to find folks more different than my brother Russell and I. We share things in common, but in other ways we are drastically different. Take, for example, cars. I know nothing about cars. Not a little, I mean nothing. When something goes wrong with my car, then I have no clue about where to start. On the other hand, Russell, my brother, he has built his own car, uh, a little sports car, and he looks after cars as a hobby. Uh, He just loves cars. He is part of rallying, and uh, cars is his life in many ways. He is in a car club. Motoring is everything to him. For me, I am not interested and know nothing about cars. Or take DIY and being handy around the house. Well, folks that know me will know very well that I am as useless as it is possible to be around the house. I am the opposite of being handy. If a fuse goes in our house or a bulb in one of our lamps, then the cry goes out, Elaine, Elaine, can you fix that bulb? Can you replace that fuse? I am useless and I really don't know where to start with any of that stuff. My brother, on the other hand, well, he built his own house. Of course, with trades helps along the way, but he essentially designed and built his own house. Now, how can two brothers be so opposite, so different, that one doesn't know one end of a screwdriver from the other? And there, the other one, my brother, he's got it all covered. There's not much that he can't do. It's interesting, isn't it? Because we're born to the same mum and dad. We're raised in exactly the same environment. So we have those things in common. And yet, we're very, very different in the kinds of ways I've just described. I want to suggest that it's a good way to start thinking about church to think in these terms. Think of your own congregation. You'll be a right mixture if you're anything like the congregation that I'm part of. We've got all sorts of folks from all kinds of different backgrounds. And yet somehow we come together as one. I know in my church it's probably the same with yours. We'll have folks that are relatively well off. 
we have folks who struggle. We've got folks from professional backgrounds. We've got folks who haven't worked for some considerable time. We've got folks who are healthy, folks who struggle in that way. We've got extroverts, introverts, tall people, short people. It takes all sorts to make a church up. It's a collection of people who have one thing in common, even though they have much that is different. One of the ways in which we are different within the church is that we all have our own unique experiences and gifts. And this is what I want to focus on this morning, that each of us has gifts. The New Testament is clear in various passages, not least the one we heard read earlier, that part of the work of the Holy Spirit is the giving of gifts to God's people, that they might use these gifts for the building up of the body. So though we are different culturally, one from another, and in terms of our background and experiences, we will certainly be different also in the gifts that God has given us. Now this is the important part. The Spirit gives gifts according to God's purpose. God is in the business of establishing his kingdom and uses us, his people, as part of that. And so he gifts us accordingly. This is the work of the Spirit. I want to say three things as we reflect on this business of us having gifts given us by the Holy Spirit. Number one, appreciate the gift that you have been given and use it. First of all, sometimes we're not aware of what our particular gift is. Maybe we have several. We just don't know. If that's the case, then perhaps you need to get alongside someone and ask them to help you discern what your particular gifts are. It's for certain that you will have gifts. God doesn't leave any of us on the sidelines empty handed. He gives gifts to us all. But you've got to discover sometimes what that is. And sometimes, as I said, that might require some help in the discernment process. And then having discovered what that gift is, we've got to use it. You know, there's an old somewhat cliched phrase, use it or lose it. I wonder if that's true in terms of the gifts that God gives us. They come to us as fresh bread each morning. Let's use the gifts that God has given us for the building up of his people. Second thing is this, appreciate the gifts that God has given to other people, those around you in your church family. Just as it's sometimes the case that we're not sure what our own particular gift is, so it will be that there are folks in your church who have not yet identified or discerned what their gift is. It might be that you have a role to encourage that person, to draw that gift out, that they might be able to exercise it all the more. We all need encouragement. Sometimes when we begin to use our gifts to begin with, we make faltering, stumbling steps in those moments, a word of encouragement from the sidelines is exactly what we need. So have your eyes open for folk in your church that you might encourage them to use their gifts all the more appropriately and all the more for the building up of God's people. And thirdly, we need to understand that each of the gifts is important for the building up of the whole picture. I guess we are all too commonly used to saying that this or that is more important than the next bit. 
Sometimes within churches, it's those who are at the front who seem somehow recognise that their gifts are more important than those that others possess. But think of a jigsaw puzzle. If you were making that jigsaw and at the end were left with some spaces, maybe some of the bits had been lost, it wouldn't be that any of the bits lost was less important. Each part of a jigsaw puzzle is pretty much the same as the next part. You just need them all there to complete the picture. And so it is in church. We need to appreciate all the different gifts that all the different people bring. And when we allow that to happen, so the picture is completed. Friends, appreciate the gifts that God has given you and use them. Appreciate the gifts that God has given others and encourage them to use them. And appreciate that all the gifts that God gives are essential for the picture to be complete, for the building up of the body. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul writes this, Each of us has received a special gift in proportion to what Christ has given. A special gift. Treasure it, that which God through his Spirit has given you. Use it. Offer yourself each day in service to God, asking, how might I use what you have given me to serve you and for the building of your kingdom? Good and generous God, in this, the season of the Spirit following Pentecost, we thank you, first of all, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then for the gifts that you give us through the Holy Spirit. Forgive us when we have neglected to use these, or when we have used these gifts selfishly rather than for the building of your people. Forgive us when we have thought our particular gift to be more important than the gifts of others. Forgive us when we have failed to recognise the gifts that others have. We pray that in the days to come, you would bind us all together as one family in Christ. Each of us exercising the gifts that you have given us that in the end we might indeed see the building up of your body, the church, and through that, the coming of your kingdom. Hear us as we pray. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Folks, it's been a pleasure sharing Sunday morning messages with you over recent weeks since my installation as moderator of the General Assembly. My immediate predecessor, Colin, had started out on that journey at the beginning of lockdown as we began to become aware of the seriousness of the pandemic and the crisis that was facing us. And I know so many appreciated Colin's Sunday messages and his daily messages. But now that we are gradually moving onwards, it seems to me to be the right time to bring an end to these regular messages from the moderator on Sunday mornings. Essentially, the worship of the church belongs to the local congregations and the vast majority of congregations have now found a way, in one form or another, to continue their worship and I want to encourage each and every one of you to be supportive of your local congregation or of others nearby if that's appropriate. I'm going to continue to communicate in lots of different ways. I hope for example you'll join me with my regular series It's a Fair Question 
Maybe you've already seen one or two of these episodes. But as I give my thoughts and attention in other directions, I again encourage you to make sure you're being part of your local congregation for weekly worship. For all of your support and for your continuing prayers, I thank you.